Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will try to understand the retina in little more detail because retina plays a very important role in the process of image formation. So let us try to understand the retina in more detail. Now, as I said, this is the light sensitive screen on which image is formed. So this is both the things are very important. So we need a screen to form image, right? There is an object, there is a lens and there is an image which is formed. So where is the image? Where will the image be formed? So for that, we have the screen called retina. So that is one important purpose of retina. The other thing is it is a light sensitive screen. That means it has got light sensitive components. There are cells in retina which can uh, sense light, which can actually uh, receive light. So that is why they are called the photoreceptor cells. Now we will see how these photoreceptor cells help. Now, the light sensitive cells or the photoreceptor cells which are present in the retina are the rods and cones. So, let us talk about rods and cones because they receive light and in turn they generate electrical signals. Now, that, that was the question, right? That the optic nerve is present in the eye so that it can carry the, the image in the form of electric impulse to the brain. But the question was who will convert or who will generate the electrical signals. So these electrical impulses are generated in these light sensitive cells called rods and cones. Now the rods and cones, how, why do they act as light sensitive cells? Because they have got specific pigments which are called photopigments and these pigments are capable of receiving light of specific wavelengths. Now, what are the pigments present in them? We will talk about that. Now, let us look at the, uh, the eye structure and there we see that there is a particular region towards the posterior wall of the eyeball where the photoreceptor cells are not present. And that particular region is known as the blind spot. So here, if you see, this is the blind spot, a region on the retina because on the retina, otherwise the photosensitive cells are present. But only in this region, there are no photosensitive cells present, which is exactly towards the posterior end. And this region is known as the blind spot. It is somewhere near the region where the optic nerves originate. This is the place where optic nerves will originate. There is another portion called fovea, which is a thinned out portion of the retina where only cones are present and rods are not present. So here if you see, it is a thinned out portion of retina. So everywhere else the retina is this thick, but here it is thinned out extremely. And this thinning out is due to the high density of cones and no presence of rods. So this region is called phobia. Now why did I define these two regions? Because these two regions are distinctly seen on the retina due to the uh, irregular distribution of the photoreceptor cells. So when we are discussing about the photoreceptor cells, we should talk about the blind spot and phobia because there the rods and cones are not uniformly distributed. Okay. So, the, if you talk about phobia, the visual resolution is greatest here due to the high density of cones. Now, why is that? What is so special about cones? So, let us try to understand the structure and function of rods and cones separately. So, this phobia is located lateral to the blind spot. That is very clear from the picture. So, there is the blind spot and laterally to it is the phobia. So let us understand rods and cones. So first let's talk about rods. Now rods are those cells on the retina which contain a purple to red colored pigment called rhodopsin. Now it is due to the presence of this pigment that this is the photopigment which can actually uh, receive light. Now these rods are responsible for vision at low light levels. Now when the intensity of light is low, it, so those light, those uh, wavelengths of light can be received by this pigment rhodopsin. So therefore rod can actually, rods can actually help in seeing at dim light. So sometimes the light is very low, it is very dim or less availability of light. Right? At that time also we are able to view things. So that vision comes due to the presence of rods 
and that is because of the presence of the pigment rhodopsin. The presence of rods are more numerous than the cones. So more rods are present than cones. So if you look at this structure, this is the internal structure of the retina. So here this blue colored cells which you see here, the blue colored cells, they are the rods. Whereas the red colored cells which you see, they are the cones. So this red colored cells which you see, they are the cones. So not this one. Okay, so the red ones are the cones and the blue ones are the rods. So if you see that the blue ones are more than the red ones. Whereas cones, they contain pigments which are responsive to red, green and blue lights. So basically these cones have pigments which are responsive to bright lights. So color distinction is done by cones. Now you would have observed that when you see objects in dim light, very dim light, you do not get to see the different colors separately. For example, let us suppose somewhere around uh, say 7 o'clock in the evening when uh, the sun is almost set and there is very slight light outside, not too much of light. So at that time if you see things, are you able to see them in bright and vibrant colors? No, right? They, they all look black and white. So that vision is provided by rods because the rhodopsin is uh, able to receive only the low light, low intensity light wavelengths. Whereas the cones have pigments which can respond to bright red, green and blue lights. So whenever the intensity of light is more, the light level is high, if it is during the daytime or if you switch on the lights, street lights or if you switch on the lights inside your dark room. So what happens, you again tend to see the different colors distinctly. So if somebody is wearing a, say, a, a white shirt and uh, not white, let us suppose somebody is wearing a red, sh red shirt and um, say a green pant too vibrant right so when you see that in bright light you are able to see that red and green color very distinctly that is because in bright light or in at high light levels the pigments which are present in the cones they are able to receive the lights of different wavelengths but if you look at the same person in dim light in that in that case, you will not be able to see the red and green color properly. That is because at that time, the rhodopsin is active and rhodopsin can only give you vision. It cannot, distinct, it, it cannot distinguish between colors. So you will not be able to see the colors separately. Now, depending upon which specific wavelengths the cone cells can receive, there are three types of cones. And these cones, as I said, they are responsible for daylight and colored vision. So they are of three types, that is S cones, M cones and L cones. So S cones, S stands for short, so short wavelength sensitive cones. So these cones are capable of receiving or capable of sensing the small wavelengths. So the small wavelengths of light. And what are the small wavelengths of light? Small wavelengths would be? So now these S cones, M cones and L cones, they can receive different colors of light like red, green and blue. So if you look at the spectrum of light, the VIBGR spectrum, so what do you see? That the blue region is at one end, the red region is at the other extreme end and the middle portion is green. So that is why the M cones will receive the green ones and similarly the S and the L cones will receive the red and the blue respectively. So that is how the different colors will be received by the different types of cone cells which are present inside the retina. And that is, what, that is how uh, the person can see the different colors distinctly. So this is how it looks like. So if you see... This graph actually shows the absorbance of uh, different types of uh, the photoreceptor cells versus wavelength. So on this side you have their absorbance and on this side x-axis you have the wavelength. So if you look at the rods, so the dotted line denotes rod. So this is how the rods react to the wavelength. So if you see they, they do it for a wide wavelength. Whereas if you look at the small Cones, they absorb the blue light, the medium, they absorb the green light and the long, that is the large wavelength cones, they receive the red light. So this is how their absorbance varies with the wavelength. So if you see the uh, 
the small cones they they occupy the lower wavelengths the set of lower wavelengths if you look at the medium cones they occupy a greater wavelength than that if you look at the large cones they occupy a even greater greater wavelength uh, range right so that is how they uh, receive light of different wavelengths whereas if you look at the rods they are like the middle of it i mean neither the small wavelengths nor the middle wavelengths nor the large wavelengths so as a result they actually give you the sensation of white uh, i mean black and white so they do not help you to recognize the extreme colors like the blues and the reds they are not able to recognize those colors so now here if you look at the internal structure of the retina you can see the rods and cones which are nothing but the photoreceptor cells you remember in one of the previous slides i told you that retina is made up of three layers of cells so this is the first layer of cells that is the photoreceptor cells the next layer of cells that is the yellow cells which are present here these are the bipolar cells and the last layer of cells are nothing but the ganglion cells so these cells which actually the photoreceptor cells will help to receive light and then image formation will take place with the help of the lens now once the image is formed then the electrical impulse is being generated in the photoreceptor cells and then it passes on through these cells the bipolar and the ganglion cells and finally it moves out of the eye through the optic nerve and reaches the brain so that is how the basic function of uh, retina is Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.